This meeting of the Eureka Springs City Council will now come to order. Madam Clerk, would you please establish a quorum? Parker Raphael. Here. Ken Pownall. Here. Karen Lindblad. Here. Butch Berry. Oh, he did give notice. Be here. Yeah. Right. Lenny Balance. I'm here. James DeVito. Here. All right. We have a quorum. Uh, please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Next is approval of the agenda. Motion to discuss. Move to approve. Second. The floor is open for discussion. Mr. Pownell. Uh, I had a call from Mr. Levine, asked that the uh, vacation be delayed until the next meeting. Yes, sir. What is that? The, vaca the Vine Street vacation be postponed until the next meeting. Oh. That was, was going to be the recommendation from the chair and the two attorneys requested it, so we're good. Did we get a second? I guess it was. Second. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. DeVito. I'd like to move to postpone item two on unfinished business auditorium commission ordinance for referendum mr barry's out of the state and uh since he's responsible for the auditorium committee i uh, would prefer that uh, we wait until uh, the next meeting to address that issue made and seconded Any further? <clears throat> Mr. Panna. Number one under unfinished uh, needs to be postponed until we fin I finish up the uh, proposed ordinance for the signs. Okay. Two second. Second. Okay. So number one, two, four, and five are all postponed for the time being until next meeting. Um, Four and, four and five, you say? Yes, four and five were postponed from the last meeting. Four is going to be postponed until the next meeting in June, the 25th, I believe. And number five is going to be postponed until <clears throat> we, the guy gets a study done from Oklahoma. Mr. Pano? Move to approve as amended. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Agenda approved. Approval of the minutes for May the 14th, Move May the 30th. Second. May the 30th, first special meeting and second special meeting. And made and seconded. Any additions, deletions, changes? None noted. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Are we, carried. Voting, me, are we yes. voting on just the 14 May meeting? Yeah, I'll probably go back and just do one at a time, yeah. So that was number 14. Okay. Oh, you started with 14, yeah, 14. not 30? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the first one. Next to be May the 30th, both special meetings. We'll start with number one. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain, I wasn't here. Okay. I can't hear Ken. Abstain, I wasn't yeah. here. I'd Thank move, you. move to approve. Okay. Second. I think we've got a second already. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. Special meeting number one is approved. <clears throat> Minutes for special meeting number two. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. All the minutes are approved. Next to be commission committee authority reports and expired terms. I uh, believe under planning we have. Miss Melissa Green and Miss Flaherty, who were nominated, I believe, two meetings ago, and that was supposed to vote on. Mr. Pennell? Move to approve Melissa Green, position five on planning. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Miss Green's in. Miss Flaherty? Yes, 
Move to approve. Second. Made and seconded from Ms. Flaherty. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Flaherty, you're in. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Um, CAPC. Don't have anything under CAPC under the hospital. We had uh, Pam Crockett was nominated at the last meeting for approval. Her term expired at 6 or 6 She did reapply. I believe you all have the, the paperwork in your file. If you didn't get one, they didn't she was either. Did you not, was she nominated last week? She wasn't nominated. It was a reapplication. It was a reapply. I don't recall her being nominated at the meeting. But we had it in the, but we had it in the paperwork. Let me. Today, though. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I believe everybody had one last <coughs> time. No. You didn't? Okay. Just got it this afternoon. From, right. from the meet, uh, minutes of the last meeting under hospital, it says Mayor, Mayor Pate withdrew the nomination of John Dolce. Yes. So. That was it. Okay. Uh -uh. All right. Okay. It's my fault then if you didn't get them. Um, you should have them this time. So consider it for next meeting. Also, you should have the addition of the nomination of Mary Jean Sell for the hospital commission. Consider her for nomination next time. Okay. Parks, there's no business under parks. Under HDC, last time I believe everybody had. Yes, ma'am. I tried to call Dan Herbert. Hebert. Yeah. Hebert. Yeah. I tried. I tried his phone number on his application every way that you can try it, and I couldn't get it to. Okay. I couldn't even get a hold of him. Right. He was so still. So the number that I have is. Let's see. Yeah, it's 479-263-9062, so if he has another number, he needs to get it to us, because I'm trying to... okay. Yeah. I'll make sure, I'll I'll make sure we get that, that right. I just about every way. He may have I had that one did. discontinued and just... I actually did get through to him on that number. Um, oh, you did? Thursday, God. Friday, I so... I called a bunch of times, and I kept getting this number disconnected. Huh. Well, first I goofed because I did. I just assumed, presumed it'd be two five three. So then when I realized, oh, it's two six three, and the nine kind of threw me too. So I just kind of kept trying. Okay. Well, we'll make sure we get a good number for him. Did you get a chance to talk to him? I did. Lynn? Okay. And Miss Allen was also nominated. Everybody talked to Miss Allen. Okay. All right. So we're good on that one. All right. Do you want to extend Mr. Hebert's till next time? Okay. And then we can go ahead and vote on Miss Allen. All right. Any discussion on Miss Allen before we go? Mr. Panna? Move to approve uh, Susie Allen for position four on HDC. The second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Miss Allen's in. Okay. Um, next is cemetery. We have one application for. Position number, let me get it out here. Number two, Miss Gloria Stevens. You should have your paperwork there. Consider her next time for, for nomination. And if you don't have a copy of it, then let me know and we'll get you one. Okay. Um, next issue is next on the agenda is Yellow Bag Research Committee. It has brought to our attention, I think Madam Clerk stated that this may wind up being an agenda issue since it's, it has not really anything to do with the yellow bag. So you may want to get it on the agenda to be addressed later on uh, at some other meeting. This meeting or the next one. Okay, as of the uh, minutes of May, May 14th, um, we had talked at this table about, uh, we had talked about talking about um, putting this on the agenda, or on the uh, ballot at the next general election. And one of my colleagues had, 
asked if perhaps we could uh, put it on the the new business agenda is the way I understood it, so that everybody would, so that the public would know that we were going to talk about that. And we did have, I did move to do that, and we did have a second. And so hopefully it will just show up on the next agenda under new business, okay. that discussion. Okay, and so I have a few, just a few comments on, uh, on the old legs. Um, I've had some people doing some research. Uh, one gentleman came to me with the uh, information that he had compared with Walmart, and he said that the small bags that we buy from the city cost 35 cents a piece, and they're available at Walmart for 14 cents a piece. And the large bags that we use, the city charges 75 cents a piece, and Walmart charges 24 cents a piece. So that's quite a, quite a big difference. Also, I have somebody who is researching uh, biodegradable bags. I believe they're made with a cornstarch base. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, um, plastic bags are not biodegradable. They degrade, but they do not biodegrade. <coughs> and they become sort of like little styrofoam pellets almost that soak up toxins and things like that and never go away. Um, but these uh, other bags, uh, I believe, are, are cornstarch based. And they actually do biodegrade. <laughs> over time. So that might be something we could look into too, something that was greener because actually, as we've talked about before, a lot of people will put their put a paper bag or a plastic bag in their trash can and they'll maybe collect two or three before they're ready to fill up their big bags. And so actually adding another layer, which is the yellow plastic bags, is not environmentally friendly. So maybe we can do something to move away with either not using yellow bags at all, which I kind of favor, or using some kind of bag that is actually biodegradable and will eventually break down and return to its natural state. So that's what I have for today, and I guess we'll be looking at uh, a discussion of uh, putting this on the ballot for the next general election at the next meeting. Okay, we'll make sure it's on new business, yes, ma'am. Very good, thank you. I had a couple of citizens call me and say that the thing that worried them about not using the city bags was that people would not be recycling as much. They would start throwing trash into their bags instead. And, and I know in the beginning those bags supported the recycling center, which they don't do now. But that's been a worry expressed to me from several people that, you know, we need to keep recycling because we're filling up the mm -hmm. landfill so fast. Well, what we have going on right now is the yellow bags don't make, don't make people recycle. In other words, somebody okay. can buy a yellow bag, they can throw everything they want in there, everything. The people who are going to recycle are going to recycle whether they're using yellow bags or not. They're conscientious. They realize that a wise society just can't keep throwing things into the into dumps. They they realize that. So so the wise people among us, the people who really care about their environment, are going to recycle whether they are coaxed by yellow bags or not. And the people who don't care about it are throwing that trash in the yellow bag just like they. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And what we're seeing going on right now, <clears throat> when the contract says that the commercial re the commercial customers and the residential customers should use approved bags, tags, or containers, and we see businesses that are putting out black bags. They're not using approved bags or approved tags or approved containers, but the, but the residents are required to use those. That's actually a class discrimination kind of thing. Uh, the, 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 the residents are being discriminated against because the contract says everybody shall use approved bags, ta tags, and containers, and the residents are the only ones that are being forced to use it. They're the only ones that that is enforced upon. So that's actually discrimination against the residents. Mr. Pound, you had your hand. I asked the question at the last meeting if, if our goal isn't necessarily to make money, to look into the cost and pay possibly if if they are really encouraging recycling and I'm just as guilty as the next person on what Miss Balance just said about, you know, if I've got a half full yellow bag that I've paid for and I've got some stuff that really should be recycled and it's raining outside, I'm going to throw it in that yellow bag and take it out with the rest of the trash. I'd like to see us look at seeing if there's any possibility at all of at least getting the bags down to, to cost if, if that is as far as the issue goes. 
also, it says in the contract we could use tags. Now, if we used, if people could buy their own bags or use whatever kind of bags they wanted and just use tags, some kind of tag, even a biodegradable tag, that would be much less and have a much less of an, an environmental impact. So that may be something we could talk about phasing over to if if people are dead set on using some kind of incentive, okay. and then everybody should use them if that's what's in the contract. Okay, which is anybody else? I have a letter here from uh, Phil Jackson, Carroll County Solid Waste Authority. Received it today, actually. So, dear Mayor Pate, to with your approval, we are planning on making several minor changes to the routes Carroll County Solid Waste runs in the city. The blue bag recycling route was established by us when we were picking up both trash and recyclables in the same truck. The intent was that was our driver. <clears throat> the intent was that our driver would then be able to stop at the recycling center and throw off the blue recycling bags before going to the transfer station to unload the trash. This was only done for 25 customers that live on the streets that were difficult for a large truck to navigate. We now collect the recyclables separately so the customers that were using the blue bag will be provided with a recycling bin consistent with the citywide service. The other minor changes that we will be picking up cardboard downtown on Monday and Fridays and eliminating the Wednesday pickup. Currently, we're sending a truck over on Wednesday, but only a few businesses utilize the service. We have been calling the affected businesses and not, have not received any complaints. Bill Jackson. Hmm. This will be available if anybody needs a copy. Okay. Next on the agenda is the Deer Hunt Committee. Um, we have another scheduled meeting on 621-12 at 2.30 p.m. for anyone that wants to show up. Um, what day of the week is that? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. 2.30 p.m. you say? Mm -hmm. I can't come. Where? We are just about to get this thing wrapped up. Um, where? where it please? Set. I'm sorry? Where? It'll be in my office. <coughs> Is anybody welcome? Anybody's welcome, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to be able to make it to that meeting, so I have some questions that I'd like to get answered. Okay. Can we answer them tomorrow yeah. for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Good deal. Okay. If nothing else, that moves us into public comments. We have the, the board. All right. First is Jerry. Come on up, bud. Get by. Okay. Go ahead and state your name for us. I'm Jerry Landrum, 19 Kimberling. Uh, I'm uh, here tonight to uh, to encourage you to uh, to adopt the. Uh, the climate action plan has been prepared by Dr. Nick Brown. Uh, council had a workshop on uh, uh, May the 22nd and, uh, and um, asked me to uh, put together a, uh, a committee. Uh, that committee, committee has uh, sort of left, uh, met last uh, Tuesday the 5th. Uh, we had six or seven people there, and uh, they'd like to call themselves the citizens uh, Climate Action Progress Committee, if that's okay. And um, there's some really good people there, lawyer, professional planner, um, guy in construction, uh, guy that has uh, knowledge of legislative issues. And so it's a good committee. They can help you all in, uh, with the advice and uh, legwork on projects. Um, so I'm, I understand that's on the agenda tonight. I'd like to encourage you all to go ahead and adopt that. Um, uh, I have a little handout for you tonight. Um, I, I don't know that this fits anybody here, but it, it might be helpful to you in the future. This is a, a short article entitled, a, uh, a Message from a Republican Meteorologist on Climate Change. And I think it does a really, really good job of explaining how this really should should never be a, a partisan political issue because it's a, it's about our future. So I want to wait for everybody to have a copy of that. and. Uh, Thank you very much. And I'll stay here uh, to help any way that I can. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, just a couple more. Anybody else need one? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Christy Kendrick, I don't know if she left with Matt or not. 
Ms. Kendrick's out in the hall, she's up next. She left? Okay. Let's go out here. Susan Tharp? Sorry. She's up there? Okay. state your name for us. Uh, Susan Tharp with Olden Days Carriage. Um, I'm just here again tonight. I have a lot of concerns with Section S and T being removed out of the carriage ordinance and also adding um, descriptions of the routes. Uh, if you guys uh, please ask some questions so that I could address some concerns whenever this issue comes up. Good. Thank you. Mickey Schneider. Hi, Mickey Schneider. Um, I just wanted to clarify a few things because there seems to be a little confusion going on. Any alderman at any time can ask for any citizen for input during a discussion. Anybody, anytime. You don't have to give up time or anything else. You can just say, can I have so-and-so? Please come up to the mic and answer questions or tell us whatever. Um, in regards to the hospital situation, reading the law can be really confusing if you don't have a background in it. So as it turns out, both Laney and James are right. The city is in compliance. It can go with either way that it wants to, but is the hospital itself in compliance with medical law? You might want to kind of look in that. And I see under new business, the ward map revisions is on there. Uh, I really hope this gets done because we've kind of been out of compliance for almost a year. So please work on it and don't postpone it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's all the public comment. Is there anybody? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to come up and talk about regular stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Blankenship. Um, I, I came as the, uh, the Planning Commission because I saw that on your agenda was a Vine Street vacation. I know that it's postponed, but I would still like to give you this information. All the times in the past when a street is asked to be vacated, most of our um, unopened streets and green space are in control of the Parks Department. So the Parks has a hearing and they have a um, a meeting and they vote whether or not to release that land back to the city which puts it at your table then usually planning commission has a public hearing on this and we send our recommendations to this this table mm -hmm. and then this table decides whether it's going to vacate by ordinance or not whether they're going to do it or not now the the state code only thing it says in our city code is that we are going to go by state code 301 through 301 our resolution will set a day for a hearing and that you will it says you'll set the day for the hearing. I don't know if that means that you want the planning commission usually does the public hearing, but if if you do it at this table, that's fine, and we'll come and weigh in on it at that time. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, thank you. So I. Skipped over you. Trying to blaze right through it. Okay, no more public comics? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I misunderstood what you said to me. I wanted to talk about the ask the deer hunt questions now, not tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll try to answer them for you now. Okay. We don't have everybody here. But well, we'll answer what we can. I mean, the way it's on our agenda, to anybody, it would look like that's the first time we're going to be here. 
short. So and I've had people call me today, so that's why I'm wanting to ask some questions. Um, what's the city's liability on this hunt if somebody's dog gets shot or somebody gets shot? It's only private property owners that allow the hunters on their property. So the city has no liability at all? Not at all. My understanding was since it's not on public property, <coughs> it is the city sanctioned. <coughs> but, well, the city. But we who, have toward immunity for I'm any non-negligent Who in the, who the city sanctioned it? The city council? Did the city council vote on it? The people voted on it, so the city council. Okay. Uh, if voted. someone shoots, I've had people ask me these questions. All right, what if what if their dog gets shot? Then what? And they don't want the hunt on their property. What happens then? Okay, uh, maybe I'm not understanding your question. Only, the only people that are going to be hunting is on private property. Yes. Yes. Okay, but say there's a stray arrow, you know, uh, I mean. There could be uh, an earthquake. These too. are questions. Yeah. No, I doubt the earthquake would, right. would be, you know, right. as easy as hunters because in this article that was in the paper, um, you know, it doesn't really say that these hunters have to have a lot of training. It just says they have to have experience, <coughs> which doesn't mean training. And that has worried some people because if they're hunting out at the edge of a piece of property and they're not supposed to be hunting on the piece mm -hmm. next door and their arrow goes astray and something else gets shot mm -hmm. besides the deer, they want to know what their recourse is. Okay. Mr. Weaver, will you answer that? Their recourse would typically be the same as if someone was illegally firing a bow or other weapon and killed a dog. There's bringing a civil suit, they can bring an action for trespass. Against? Against the hunter. Okay. Um, one of the other questions that was asked was, um, if a deer is shot and does not die and comes onto the adjoining property where there's not supposed to be a hunt, what happens to Game the deer? Game and fish rigs state they can go on that property and get it. What? Game and fish regulations state a hunter can go on there and retrieve the wounded animal. They better not be trespassing on my property. Yeah, that's now, trespass. Just telling you what Game and Fish told us. <laughs> well, Tim. <coughs> okay, yeah, but they so can still go So, in other words, if a deer gets shot and stumbles onto somebody's property, <clears> it's going to lay, lay there dying until somebody gets a hold of, what, Game and Fish to get permission? Well, to go on anybody's property in the state of Arkansas, you have to have permission. Yes. Either to hunt on or to go on. Right. <clears throat> now, if, and we can sit here and, and make scenarios up all day long, but if if the person who owns the property that the animal went on to has any compassion for the animal or, it, you can put it however you want it, but they would normally let somebody go get a wounded animal because you can't unwound the animal. Well, I understand that. that the, well, no, I'm, I'm saying it's... You it's, can't, but, but, you know, these people here didn't want an animal, did not want a deer killed, yeah. and these people here did, and this animal goes over on their property, yes. and then they're standing there with a dying animal, so right. what happens then? Well, they can either take the animal themselves, or let the animal die, or let, them, let the hunter have it. But they don't want to kill the animal, so they're not going to take the animal. Okay, then they can so either they have the to animal. stand there and watch the animal die while tell someone You're not going to answer that question. You're not going to answer I can't it? answer that question. Well, I don't know the answer to it. Okay, well, would you please find out the answer and get back to me because I've yes. had people call and ask Yeah, th this. that's the only three scenarios that I can even think of logically. Either the hunter is allowed to go get it, the property owner lets the hunter go get it, or the property owner lets the hunter, lets the animal die. What if the property owner is not there at the moment? What if their kids are there? Okay, well. Well, children, you know, there people, again. there's some people that do not like to have their children watching yeah. dying animals. Yeah, I understand. That have been shot. But and I've talked to people that have been in bow hunts before. Right. And, you know, it's not as exacting as it was in this article. As I wish it was. To animals. But you're absolutely you correct. You it's keep not. interrupting her. I'm having so. a conversation with her. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you're going to get back to me with the answer to that I will try to find the answers for you, yes, indeed. What's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
<coughs> okay, thank you. Any further? Usually when I have conversations with people, I don't like them to interrupt me. Was I interrupting you, Karen? If I was, I apologize. I would have thought we were just conversing. Thank you. All right, moving right along. First item on the agenda that has not been postponed is number three, animal drone vehicle <coughs> ordinance. Love to discuss. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Floor is open. Who's going to take the lead? Mr. Vito. Well, it seems that, to my knowledge, the only points of contention we have here are items S and T. Uh, and if uh, council would agree, I, I would ask Ms. Tharp to uh, come to the microphone and express her concerns about those two items. Um. Before uh, you all receive the revised version uh, that Mr. Weaver, uh, Mr. Weaver, sorry, uh, give you, um, section S and T, um, S was to regulate the time that we were allowed to operate. Um, you currently already regulate us on Spring Street. Due to traffic concerns, um, we already <coughs> regulate ourselves as far as not coming in before 5 o'clock because it's just a madhouse out there on Saturdays. And even on Saturday evenings, you know, we still run the risk of coming in early. But to have, as it stands now, if I wanted to come in at 11 o'clock on a Saturday, I could come out here at 11 o'clock and jam up traffic all day long. Anywhere, anywhere on our route. And so we're actually asking you to regulate us and not let us run before 5 o'clock because of that safety concern. If somebody else was to take over our franchise down the road, they would have that capability to run any time they want. I'm sorry, 4 p.m. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, they would have the ability to to do that. And so a lot of these issues that we're addressing, we're not trying to keep people out. We're not trying to get it changed right away. I understand this is not going to go effect right away. But for future councils, you all is not going to be here. And it, things that have been stated during these meetings and knowledge that you all have is not going to be carried on to the next council. And so that's why we're pushing so hard to get these things cleared up right now. Now, on Section T, um, to regulate on a state highway, um, that section actually had two parts to it. And one part was left on here, which is now currently Section P, which is regulating a state highway, the north part of um, Highway 23, from the Historical Museum to the top of Planer Hill. Um, Maybe the first part of Section T that you took out was worded wrong. I think Mr. Weaver said that it was that he was had some concerns with it, but he left this part on. Uh, if that first part was worded properly to where they were not allowed to operate, it says shall be operated by a franchise holder on Highway 62 between the city limits. Um, if that section could be left in there. Um, use a city try to maintain a safety safe environment for a tourist and so yes Joe Blow that uh, wants to go take a horse and carriage up and down 62 with their own <clears throat> morals can go do that but you as a city need to regulate when they start collecting money and a tourist starts paying you money to get on a ride and go into an unsafe area you need to be able to tell that person that they can't collect money and put that tourist in danger. And so I don't care how you word it, as long as Mr. Weaver is happy with it, that section needs to be in there. Your chief of police stated that is dangerous. They do not need to be hauling passengers on 62. And you all blatantly took that out. So with that being said, 
I really wish you would look into that as a, as a major thing to come back into this final ordinance. Also, just for clarification for future councils, if you would please ask for an appendix, appendage, whatever, to the ordinance that states where each route is. Route A is on this street. Route C is on this street. Route B is on this street. So when the next council member that don't know nothing about this comes in here and says, where's this route at? It's right there. Any questions, Mr. Levino? Uh, question for the city attorney. Is, is this your draft of, of the animal? Um, not that. No, that is not. Okay. I've got so many animal drawn ordinances sitting around here. I'm trying to make track of which one's which. So what you want to add it also is just uh, an appendage that would state who has routes where and what the, or just what the routes are that are designated Not necessarily routes. who, just that it's a designated route. It's a written description where that you could go look in a map and say this is belongs with franchise so and so this belongs with franchise a b or c okay. anybody else Mr. is the current one the one that says 514 draft the can i'm sorry about the current provision yes yes he's only sent you one and this is it i believe this is what susan's talking about incorporating it into the Ordinance that explains the routes would be very helpful. Anybody else? No further, we'll move on to the next one. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Will this automatically roll over to the next meeting? Should we discuss it more now? We you haven't just, taken any Yeah, action. the floor's still open. If you want to discuss any part of this, you can want to discuss the <clears throat> animal ordinance. I mean, the animal drawn ordinance. Yes, ma'am. Can we send this back to Mr. Weaver and have uh, F's and T put in here, which will become P and Q and the appendix for the routes? Mr. Weaver. I would suggest you not attach your routes because this is not going to affect your current franchises. So the new franchises, when they come into the B, which is what this will affect, is when the, the current ones expire and, and the new ones come in. A, a uh, franchise holder may very well ask for a different route than is currently available uh, because they may see that their particular route would be more profitable to them running on a different location in the city than what the current franchise holders may be uh, exercising. So that I would suggest that the appendix, if you're going to create one, be added each time that new franchises are approved because this doesn't this won't affect the current state of your franchise holders it affects the next time they renew or the next time a new franchise is granted it's gone. we have two franchises that are being run right now that have stated routes and we know what those routes are so it might behoove us to, at this time, at least add those two, because we do know that they're in existence. We do know exactly what they're supposed to be. And if that was on the book, that would be one step closer to where we're trying to go. But since this law doesn't take effect, basically, until later, that would become a confusion if you adopt it as part of this particular ordinance. I think you should, if you want to attach some kind of appendix to the current ones and their routes, you need to do that by a separate ordinance. Understood. I don't think you want to combine the two and create a point of contention down the road of did this apply, did it not apply, where does it apply, how does it apply. Okay, so we could, but we could do it separately. I think you could do it separately. What effect it might have, I'd have to think about a little bit because the current franchise agreements have rights. So if you're all, if you're not changing that, you're only you're probably fine. But if you're going to try to change that route in any way, uh, you're changing your contract, and so that would be a present problem. 
But if you're just going to formalize this is the route that's been approved, that's probably okay. I may have made myself totally but clear of that, but uh, you, you, you probably can establish what is already in existence, but not change. Okay, I would be in favor of that as a separate, as a separate issue, establishing what we know we have right now. Mr. Vito, hand you hand the first. Uh, yeah, um, I would move that uh, your motion never got I a second. I didn't move. So uh, I, I would move to instruct the city attorney to add uh, sections S and T to the 514 draft and uh, bring it back to the council table. And, and since we're going to have two separate sections and an, an addendum that uh, or an appendix that we, we can address that through a separate ordinance but we need to get this one hammered out and uh, put in place for the next franchises and then we can have a second for that. So m my motion is to instruct the city attorney to uh, rework the draft and add uh, items S and T. Second. Second. Mr. just go up. Well, please. but you said on T there was more. Didn't you say there was more to T than here? So if we just yeah. add this back in, then that's putting not everything in there. You can, you can look at the, oh, you do have this copy, yes? The, I do the, have the, this one, but I thought she said that okay. there was more to T than, that there was a part of okay, T that was taken the, the out. Copy, yes, the copy that you're looking at there has, section T has two paragraphs. Yeah, there's an, another paragraph on the other page. Correct. The first paragraph was taken out because it was addressing Highway 62. The second paragraph was addressing the north part of Highway 23 here was left in. Oh, I, I was told so that everything I'm, in gray was being taken out of there. Right. So I would like to see the first part of Section T no. okay. put back in, worded properly as not to... I mean, apparently the second paragraph was worded okay, so we don't get the first oh, paragraph. Right. Okay. And, in compliance to where we're not, where the attorney approves of it. Okay. And then. I just wanted to be sure that everything got put back in there that we were talking I about. I think the attorney kind of okay. understands what we're trying to say verbiage wise. Any further? All right, motion on the floor for the city attorney to add S and T in their entirety back to the, uh, the ordinance as it is. Any further? All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried, Mr. Weaver. Okay. Put that on your due list. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, four and five or postpone number six be the date for the 2012 mid year budget review. Madam Clerk. The All six council people could come to a meeting on Wednesday the 27th at 10 30 if everybody's schedule stays. And that's the only time slot that was available. What time? 10.30? Yes, 10.30 on the 27th. Wednesday. Here in the council room? Yes, and it has been reserved. 10.30? Yes. Okay. Okay, any questions on that one? All right. 627, 12, 10.30 here in the council room. Is that correct? Okay. <coughs> All right. Next is... Number seven, opposition to water fluoridation resolution. <coughs> Move to discuss. Second. Made and seconded. Floor is open. Mr. Pennant. Move to sign a resolution number and read for discussion purposes. Second. Resolution number will be 600. Six. Yeah, we'll vote. Yeah. Thank you. Too. Need a voice or a roll call? Okay, voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Resolution number 600. Resolution in opposition to the mandated <coughs> fluoridation of the Eureka Springs City water supply. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, having been informed that the state intends to require fluoridation of the city's water supply, 
And whereas there are recent scientific studies indicating that there are adverse effects of fluoride on the human body, and whereas there are concerns over the purity of the chemicals currently used in water fluoridation, and whereas the city of Eureka Springs water supply system contains areas of older pipes and equipment that may contain materials that have not been studied as to their possible abilities to combine with fluoride and create possible harmful compounds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that the City Council of Eureka Springs does not support fluoridation of the Eureka Springs water supply. Period. Period. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. Ms. Bellis. First of all, I'd like to thank you for preparing this and, and bringing it to the table for us. Um, I'd like to ask you a question. On our therefore be it resolved, can't we say something like the City Council of Eureka Springs vehemently opposes? I suppose you could change it to that type of language if you so desire. Can we make I it? I don't know that it'll have any more effect on anyone. Can we make it any stronger than does not support, or do you think that's says what I it needs to say. I think it's somewhat generic uh, so that it can be directed not only to the state legislature or to one entity of state government uh, and it was left in that form of purpose uh, but if you want to direct it to your uh, in, a, in a more strongly worded manner I would suggest that you're, you're, you're limiting who it may affect. I see. Mr. Pena. Point of clarification as far as um, the way this reads, it, it, it doesn't clarify where this is even going to go to. Does it need to state that in the resolution or are we just making an assumption it's going to go to the water fluoridation department of the state or <clears throat> how, how are we, uh, who are we directing this to? There's, there's nothing in the resolution that says that. I think it's just a statement by the city that they don't support it. I think it could go to the yeah. janitor and could, yeah. you know, somewhere yeah. else. And, you know, yeah. I, I just feel like there should be something in there that directs it to a particular entity, whether it's our district representative, you know, the ADEQ or whomever. But it just kind of leaves it out there floating once we vote on this. Mr. Lee. I don't know that there is a particular body you can direct it to to have a greater effect. And that's why it was written in a generic form so it could be passed along to multiple entities. Uh, I think this table can decide if you want to direct that it be mailed to a particular <coughs> entity or sent to a particular entity. I suspect that uh, it will get some play in the press uh, and may actually have more effect through that than anywhere else. But uh, it was intentionally left generic because I don't know, maybe that somebody who we're council does, the direction that it should be directed to a particular entity, but if you want to have your maximum spread so that it uh, meets with more eyeballs on the state level, I left, I left it generic for that purpose. Well. So in other words, you feel comfortable that this document could be forwarded to any of the entities and it would say what we want it to say. It could, it could go to the janitor. It could go to uh, every member of our legislature. It could go to the governor. It could go to anybody. We could forward this to anybody and it would be, it would suffice for for what I, we're I trying to if it achieve. I passed by the, by the council that it would show their opposition to anyone that was to read it that way. Thank you. Mr. Penner. I move we approve <coughs> resolution 600 as read. Second. Now we do a call. No, it's a new. Mr. Raphael? Yes. Mr. Pownall? Yes. Ms. Balance? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. 
Ms. Lindblad, <coughs> five zero. Thank you. Okay. Good job, folks. Yes, sir. I make a motion that either the mayor's office or the city clerk determine every possible office that this be sent to and shown in the record that on when it was sent. Okay. Please pick one. <laughs> city clerk. Second. Okay, there was a motion seconded. All in favor? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I would I would like it to come back to council before we okay where it's sent to. I'll amend my motion. Let the city clerk prepare a list <coughs> of appropriate places for distribution and address it at the next council meeting. Second. Since it's amended, it's still called for a roll call vote. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay. <clears throat> Next on the list is the action for non-participating commissioners. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Floor is open. Mr. Powell and Ms. Balance have that one on the list. I'd, I'd like to uh, defer this to, uh, I don't want to say the next meeting, but I realize that there are certain commissions that states uh, reasons for termination. Uh, I know at one time in previous councils there was an attempt to pass an ordinance that uh, would remove uh, inappropriate commissioners. And I think this really needs to be addressed to where it could encompass each and every commission, uh, mainly in the areas of lack of participation and lack of attendance uh, and, and events and meetings that these commissions have. So uh, with that being said, I move to postpone this to the next meeting. Second. Made and second to postpone the next meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, next in new business. <coughs> First on the list is discussion of the climate action plan resolution. Mr. Effie on Ms. Balance. Motion to discuss. Second. Floor is open. I'd like to assign this resolution a uh, number and rate it for discussion. Second. Everyone has a copy, you should have a copy. Everyone has a copy, you should have a copy. No. Several people. The number will be 601. Did you do a vote on signing the number? No, we're going to. Okay. Okay. This will have to be a roll call one since it's new. No, no okay. just resolution. Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? I think it's found here. Okay, resolution number 601. Whereas Eureka Springs, Arkansas recognizes the threat of man man made climate change as a significant global challenge of the 21st century, one which requires active efforts to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. Whereas former Mayor Dana Joy signed the U.S. Conference of Mayors Climate Protection Agreement, which calls for cities, cities to strive to meet Kyoto Protocol emission reduction targets. Whereas the city completed a greenhouse gas inventory to estimate total emissions of carbon dioxide and methane, the two most significant greenhouse gases released within the city. Whereas the city identified critical projects, policies, and priorities in completing a climate action plan, the implementation of which can both reduce the emissions of greenhouse gas, gases and provide savings in areas such as energy expenditures for residences, businesses, and city government. Whereas the city's welcome status as, a, as both a progressive 
community and a significant tourist destination is enhanced when positive actions are taken to improve the local and global environment. A special committee shall be formed to achieve the recommendation of the mm -hmm. greenhouse gas really? emission reduction yeah, plan. You've got a different one than one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's now there for I yeah, think it's in, it looks like there's another paragraph in there. Do y'all have another there? line in there? We have the now therefore be it resolved. I should have received that one. That's the only one I've got. <laughs> okay. So who's got the real one? We let them know. <laughs> From where you were. <laughs> All right, I'll leave I see. Light up, which would be fine. All right, let's see. Did you do it? What's it do? Environmental. A special committee? No. Leave, no. it, leave that off, just go now, therefore. Okay, so it needed to stop yes. at, or taken to improve the local and global environment. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, hereby adopts the Eureka Springs Climate Action Plan, a set of defined goals which, if acted upon, will reduce the overall emission of greenhouse gases that result from activities of the city and its citizens, businesses, and visitors. Why was this taken out, the special committee? It wasn't taken out. It was put in. It was put in? Yes. Oh, I think it should be put in because we could pass all the resolutions. Oh, Mr. Mr. Pinnell seemed to and requ no, request that. And if, no? I, excuse me, point of order. If we don't have a special committee, then we can pass all the resolutions we want and there won't be any action taken. And I think this is something the city should sponsor. Okay. I'm not aware of the amended one. I've got the one that she just finished reading. And I think that's the one you've got. Okay. So we really have. I don't have it. You don't have it? <laughs> I don't either. I was looking on this one. Okay. Ms. Ballant, which one do you have? I have the updated The amended version. one? I do. Um, okay, we never got the amended one, so. So maybe we won't be able to take any action on this until the next meeting, but we, okay. there, there was a question brought up at the last workshop or uh, committee meeting about the last whereas, and you do not have a copy? If you would like to look at this, I'd like to have your opinion on something. Is this the new, well, the new one? Yeah. Um, in, in the last whereas, the question was whether the last sentence should be in that whereas or should it be at the, the now therefore be it, be it resolved? Because this is actually an action which should maybe be in, in the re resolution part, the resolved part. First, we probably need to get everybody on the same Truly. page with the same resolution so there's no questions about what you know we're looking at we've already assigned the number to the one that then was the old then, one so if you want to postpone it till the next time i would move i would move to to add the sentence a special committee shall be formed to achieve the recommendations of the ghg emis emission reduction plan by 2020 and i would ask the attorney if he thinks that should re be in the last whereas or if it should be in the re in the resolved in the resolved portion. She's talking to you, yeah. To make it have the effect of creating it, it would go in the last paragraph of the now therefore resolved. It would not go in a whereas situation. Thank you. Now, the question is what kind of teeth you're giving this. Uh, and I think that's something you really need to consider is are you giving this committee illegal authority to do things in the city because if you put it in there the way you've got it the committee is going to be able to act in a way that may be adverse to what council is thinking should be done do you have a suggestion uh i'd like some time to think about it honestly <laughs> mr devito he had a hand up first. we we don't need it to be in the body of the resolution uh committees have always been at the discretion of council to form. Uh, I mean, the committee's already formed. We don't need it part of the resolution. No. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> so uh, 
I don't see any need to uh, place it in the resolution. If council wants a committee, then great, let's have a committee, but it doesn't need to be part of the resolution. You don't need to figure out. Ms. Lynn, go ahead. Well, I was wondering if we could postpone this a little further back in the meeting and if Diane could make us copies of whatever the right one is so that we all can sit here and discuss it because I have one that doesn't have any of that. I've got the same one you have. I would go a step further.